Hey Tim, one more video here. Uh, this is five hours later from the first video I took when I came in uh, this morning. And of course I worked on a lot of this carving yesterday also. Um, but it, it turns out as um, light's not very good, but as I got um, the major conflict areas for the worst point to begin with, we're on the lower side uh, near the oil pan rail and in here. So um, let me try to get some better light. Um, you know, so I got all this and uh, basically eight points here, 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 and here, here. And here and then back over in here here these were the the worst areas for the for two counterweights on the crankshaft um, once I got it to start turning a little bit you how it worked out is you get you know you got no rotation whatsoever in the beginning the crank wouldn't even sit down in the bearings so as you start opening up these areas and uh, there are a couple other areas, but anyway, you get uh, this stuff opened up in here. And finally, the crank would actually sit down, you know, in the bearings in these saddles, but it wouldn't turn. Um, and that was about the point I was at last yesterday, last night when I left. But uh, as I got it freed up up in this area, and it sat down in the bearings, then you started to be able to just barely rotate the crank in certain spots. And uh, you just had to keep, I had to crank it and out maybe 15 times, um, you know, each time that uh, you uh, put it back in and turn it, you know, you, you first it was up here and then maybe it's here and here and here. And, uh, you know, over uh, five, eight hours later of, of cutting out your interference areas up here, uh, higher when the block's upside down, but lower, you know, near the pan rail. Uh, then you'd get past here, and then it would be, you know, interference here and here and here and here. Um, finally, at the very end, where you could get it to turn, you know, basically like, uh, you know, 350, 360 degrees, um, where it would just, you know, barely, you'd almost get all the full revolution, but it'd still hit. The worst interference problems are down in here, uh, down in the cam tunnel, and uh, where I have the red here became at the very tail end the point that had to be opened up quite a bit to get it to finally be able to uh, do a full revolution where you can keep going and turning the crankshaft all the way around uh, in the bearing. So here. And then the opposite side over here, where it's red, these four points, the third one back here, where it's red, and back uh, over here became the four last points moved, you know, all the way up into the cam tunnel. Uh, so right now, it'll I can turn it turn the crankshaft by hand. It'll swing around. It's still rubbing ever so slightly. You can just hear it brush, but not enough to lock up the crank in those four points. So I'm going to go in with a, a smaller little burr and uh, open that up slightly, and then I'll go in here and, and polish all inside the block to stress relieve it. Um, and uh, once I go in, just uh, in these four points and give a little bit more room in there. Uh, we have crank end play of how I've set when I, I cut the thrust bearing to get end play. We have crank end play when the crank, as long as the crank counterweights aren't down in, you know, that area. But when you, and the worst, the worst, uh, the worst point right now is in the front because I've gotten, this is pretty close, but these two points here, this red, and this red, they're still rubbing, brushing. It won't lock the crank up, and you can barely feel it. You can barely hear it when it brushes, but I do notice when it's the counterweight is down here on this number two main saddle, 
you know, where the counterweight's up by the camshaft, uh, you lose the, the end play we have. Um, so you, uh, I'm going to go in there, here, here, cut a little more, and just lightly here, even though it's probably not needed, just a very little bit. And then I'll go in and polish and stress relieve it. And then what I'm going to do is I've marked this. Get some better light over here. I've marked this crankshaft. We've got some poor light, but. If you can see it or not, but aluminum residue, and I've put some marker around this trailing edge of the counterweight here. And the biggest conflict point is where it comes to a point here. Also on this one down here. Uh, back a little bit on this back edge. So in these areas I've marked on the crankshaft, I'm going to put it in the lathe and I'm going to knock down those edges. Um, to me, that's kind of like when I'm uh, having a clearance issue, let's say with piston to valve clearance, it's real tight or something uh, to that uh, effect. And I'm able to uh, get what I need with the no head gasket in or something when I put the head gasket on I know I have a little safety cushion there that 40 thousandths or whatever so buffing the edge off here you know I'll basically get it to where it clears in the block no problem and now when I go in on the lathe and knock these trouble areas off the crank that'll give us our safety or margin of error there uh, in case you'd ever you know have a bearing go south or something like that that it's not really uh, hitting on the block hard where it could potentially break the block so that's the, the goal that's the plan um, once I get this crank buff down in the block, just in those four points, um, those four points, uh, a little bit more unpolished, I, uh, should be able to put the crank in and the rear main seal and glue up the back cap and all that. I already know my bearing clearance is good, um, between two and a half and three thousandths, depending on where you measure the bearing, um. Uh, when it's in there, they always uh, give a, a little bit different room near the parting line versus 90 degrees off the parting line for your bearing clearance. But that's all good. And uh, hopefully, uh, you know, now we got the crank problem solved. When I go start to load pistons in there, I hope that uh, the pistons clear the counterweight. They should, again, because the problem was with the block and not with the crank. So hopefully uh, that'll be the, the worst of this until uh, we get to trying to get the valve train geometry correct with those SB2 heads in a non-SB2 block. That'll be probably the next hurdle. But uh, glad we're able to, looks like we're going to be able to use this block. All right. Bye.